Today's guest is Natalie Jill, AKA Natalie Jill Fit on social media. She's got over half a million followers on Instagram and growing and several million followers across platforms. She is wise. She is straightforward. She is my kind of lady. And we got to meet out in California through a mutual friend a couple months ago. And I was just blown away by her. First of all, I'll say in the beginning of the episode, she's 51 years old and she looks 31 years old. So I just straight up asked her, I'm like, tell me, what do you think contributes to that? So that's right where we're kicking off. Um, she puts so much content now for women and, you know, men can get a lot out of it too, but just as we start to age, what matters, you know, t- she's very open about going through perimenopause, going through menopause as a woman and what all that entails. And she just brings a lot of humor to it and just normalizes it. And I really appreciate that about her. So she's dropping wisdom on this podcast today. And she also does a lot of coaching with goals and business and things like that. So towards the end of the episode, we get more into how to actually make things happen in your life. And if there's somebody who knows how to make things happen, it's her. So um, make sure you also check out her podcast. It's called midlife conversations with Natalie Jill. I was just on her podcast and that was so much fun. So check that one out. If you feel like hearing me anymore or check out all of her amazing episodes, um, would link her podcast and show and website in the show notes. So, um, she has lots of offerings that you guys can check out from her and we'll go ahead and dive in. Here is Natalie Jill. Okay. So if you guys are not watching on YouTube and you're listening on audio, I am going to have to manually explain to you that I am talking to this unbelievably gorgeous woman who looks like she's like in her twenties, but she's not, she is actually tells her age. She's 51, which is just freaking crazy girl. Like it's freaking crazy. (laughs) (laughs) And so, um, we're going to talk all about like being healthy as we get a little bit older. I'm 40 now. So I don't really think 51 is like old, you know how that goes, but (laughs) yeah, I don't think 51's old either, but it's, it's just funny. Cause you know, we grow up thinking that that's so far away. Like you think 50 right. is like so far away. And then when you hit it, I had this, you know, it's like, it's all of a sudden it, you picture like literally over the hill, like you're over this right. hill, as if we all live to a hundred, which who knows if we do or we don't, but it really, it does feel weird that number, but what was so funny yeah. is just even how you just started this intro. So many times people will say to me, well, you don't look 51 and I'm th- <laughs> but I always think, well, what's it supposed to look like? Like who there decided what it's supposed to look like? Cause to me, this is what it looks like. This is who I am. And this is what a lot of my friends look like. And so Mm -hmm. I don't know why we decided it had to look like the golden girls. Cause that's, that's a long time ago. (laughs) Well, and yeah, exactly. I was like, you're, you know, how people are saying like 40 is a new 30. You're like 50 is a new 30. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I just don't, I don't think I, I don't think like, I think of, in fact, I have a friend who I saw her ads on social media and she had these really like older gray haired women um, in an ad for a 50 plus thing, I screenshot and I sent it to her. I'm like, who's 50 year old is this? That looks like it's my grandma. What do you, I don't understand. And she's right. like, that's what I get. You know, it was just funny. Like people are just not even aware of how they, we condition that this belief right. that 50 is so old. Well, and I love the example that you're setting. Um, I'm friends with Kathy Smith, who was like, kind of like a fitness icon back in the eighties and nineties. And like, she's what, I think she may be 70 now. And I'm looking at her, like I was at the gym with her and she can kick my butt. Like she's yeah, going across rings, amazing. she's box jumping, she's doing toes to bar. And I'm like, okay, amazing. thanks for showing me that that's possible. And she talks about health span and you're, you're one of those people, Natalie, like you're like, Hey, 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 hey no, uh, <laughs> yeah. it does, we, and, and I'll, I'll say this because I'm dating, <laughs> mm-hmm. I have been on dating apps. And one thing that I have noticed is like, as you get, cause I, you know, I got divorced in my early thirties and now I'm 40. And so through this time period, I've noticed like now that I'm kind of dating like older guys, I'm like, Whoa, once you get out of your thirties, like how you take care of yourself dramatically yeah. changes your appearance. Like I'm, I'm like, how is that guy 40 and that guy's 40? How are they both 40? There's no yeah. way, you know? And so it's can you crazy. talk on that about like what you think yeah. has led to so, this? Yeah. So there, <laughs> I mean, obviously there's a lot of lifestyle things, um, but mm-hmm. there's also a lot of mindset things. And mm-hmm. I'm just going to differentiate. Like for one, I don't, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do, I don't do like a lot yeah. of things. And I don't mean like I never drink, like I'll right. have a glass of wine on occasion. It's just not right. a go. I don't need it. I don't want it. It's not like a, it doesn't really add any value to my life. Right. Um, I, I also don't eat processed foods. I mean, and again, wow. not a never, but just the majority of the time, like I'm, right. I'm focused on eating unprocessed, natural, real food. Um, it's not my lifestyle to go have fast food, drink, smoke, all the things. So that's, so number one, that that's yep. huge. I mean, if you think about yep. if, if you focus on 
putting in what nature created into our body. I feel like that <laughs> reflects on the outside. It just does. Yes, it does. So now, now, however you define that, like to me, that's fruits, vegetables, lean proteins. Like it's right. like, I, I have, that, that's what it is. Healthy fats, lots yeah. of water. Yeah. Um, that's, that's one. Um, Okay. So let's, let's pause there for a second. So like the lesson is you're not taking in all these things that super oxidize you, that super age you really quickly. And then you're taking in things that actually help your body recover, heal. Yeah. I'm doing actually the opposite. (laughs) So actually it's funny. My second book is called aging in reverse. And I don't love the title right now for a number of reasons. And I'll explain (laughs) that later, but my second book, it's in stores everywhere, but I really talk about the power of fruits and vegetables. And in this world of like keto fascination and high fat diets. I think, especially in menopause, like we cannot overlook the powers that live in fruits and vegetables. Like I know there's so many benefits and it makes me nervous when people cut those completely out. I think there's rapid aging that happens. Yep. Um, I really go. And we talked real quick. We talked about that on when you had me on your show and it's the same, it's like, cool. Like in a very specific case, keto might serve a place for a time, but like the goal to me is like, get, but like heal the stuff and get back onto as many nutrient dense things from nature as you possibly can. So I totally agree. So just most people that that really look great in the second half of our life, um, that really look great. If you look at their diet, they have not been on long-term carnivore keto. They just have not They're They're eating a heavy plant-based. Um, and I don't mean, when I say plant-based, I don't mean vegan (laughs) only plant-based meaning I eat a lot of meat protein, like animal protein, but I also have a heavy amount of vegetables and fruits. So I I will say I was at the grocery store yesterday and there was like an older Asian man in in line in front of me and he looked so good. Right. He looked so good. Mm -hmm. He was like healthy and he just looked so like beautiful. Like just, Mm -hmm. you know, I could tell he was older, but he looked so youthful only produce. All yeah. he was buying was Isn't that produce. wild? Isn't yeah. that wild? Yeah. And I, and I have, there's a whole other topic we can get into about mu- maintaining muscle. And I do believe we need animal protein for that yeah, me personally. Too. Um, but I, I have an abundance of fruits and vegetables. And I think that I, it's really dangerous to me when people are cutting those out, like really cutting yeah. them out. If you don't care about aging rapidly, then maybe, but yes, no question. You cut out vegetables. You might get, you know, cut out all your carbs. You might get leaner temporarily, but you're not going to do anything for, for youth, for looking younger or feeling yeah, younger. Yeah. Like the antioxidants and polyphenols. I'm a big fan too. So yeah. yeah. So that's, so that's number one. And then number two, I'm going to say, um, and this is just like a lifestyle thing. Um, bodies in motion, stay in motion. So I'm, I'm active and that doesn't active can mean different things to different people, Mm -hmm. but what the, the general term of active means you're not sitting on your butt all day. (laughs) So, so if you're at a desk job and then you're sitting and then you're driving and then you're getting on the couch, you're not active. So active to me is making it a priority in your schedule to move your body. Like I I have a jam day today. The first thing I do when I got up was like, I'm going for a hike, like before anything, because I'm like, I need to be moving my body. I want to be in nature. I've got to be outside. I've got to be moving. I've got to be sweating. I've got to get my heart rate up like that. Staying in motion is very important. Um, and yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, we both talked about how like you, you feel like that you have ADHD and I don't know if I do, but it like definitely tend towards those qualities and have some really high genetic risk factors. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure my brother is I'm pretty sure my son is like, we, we don't diagnose it, but I'm like, it's, it's served me in a lot of ways. Cause I literally can't like, I will definitely yeah. be moving after this interview. Cause I just had another one yeah. before and it's like, no, dude, that's way too yeah. long in a freaking chair. So <laughs> yeah. I thought about getting even one of those little walking pads for under my desk. I don't know. Yeah. If you- I don't know. Just, just, I know it's slow. It's not like, but just, right. just to just stay in motion. You know, there, I talk about the pain cycle a lot. Um, I'm somebody who's had a lot of injuries. I mean, and mm-hmm. as we age, we're going to have injuries. I've, I had four major injuries in the last few years, mm-hmm. believe it or not, like torn bicep, ruptured disc, all kinds of things. Oh my God. And the tendency when you're injured and I'm, I'm glad I walked through this because I get it now is to want to be stationary is to not want to move to go. It hurts to move. It hurts yeah. to go do this. So then we end up in a pain cycle where we don't want to move because mm-hmm. we don't want to hurt. And now we're, so we're not helping our body heal. And now we're eating mm-hmm. junk. Cause that feels better for energy in the moment. So right. you end up in this whole pain cycle of not being active and eating junk. And it's just, it, it loops where the break to break free of that, you have to move and be in motion. Mm-hmm. So I am not a fan of like, you're injured and you're just going to be sedentary now. That's, and that, I don't know doctors that recommend that they might do that yeah. as a temporary while you're in a splint or cast or whatever, right. but you should be moving. You've yeah. got to find a way to move. So 
to me, it's mission critical to keep my body moving. Yeah. If you saw my MRI and saw that I literally have no disc between L5 S1, it ruptured out. I had emergency surgery to remove oh, it. There's wow. nothing there. There's no fusion. There's no disc replacement. Oh, wow. I should be in so much pain. And let me tell you, Tara, if I, if I did not work out and move, I would be in a lot of pain. Oh, interesting. But it's because I've stayed in motion and because I'm very clear to activate my core and my glutes and yeah. take my lower back out of the equation. I'm not in pain. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. That's so helpful for so many people. I, 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 you know, I just had to tell a client the other day, she's like, wait, why do I have to work out six days a week? And I'm like, you're not working out six days a week. Those are walking recovery days. Moving. And I need you, <laughs> I need you to do those. I need you to walk because it's going to help you recover yes. from your workouts. Because when we're walking, we're getting blood flow. We're getting lymphatic flow. Like everything is starting to flow and it actually yes. helps you feel better. Yep. So thanks for Which sharing adds that. to another component of why walking for me. And I now I do live in San Diego. So I'm going to, and I yeah. know people listening are like, well, I live in Minnesota or I live here. And so yeah. <laughs> I, but I will say I did choose to move here. You That's know, right. I chose, I made you that a choice. Your life. Yeah. Um, I feel very strong about being in nature for healing and for mm -hmm. anti-aging and for, I, I say anti-aging, but in, aging well, I'll say that. Um, we need sun. We need to be grounded. We need to be near mm -hmm. water. We need to be near mountains. We need to be outside. There's a lot of healing in being in nature. So I think another thing that rapidly ages people is when you're in a building all day with artificial light, totally. artificial air, all totally. the things we're, we're not working with our bodies there. Yeah. I mean, just, even if you just imagine that you imagine yourself for 20 years being by the ocean and playing or being in the mountains and being outside, or you imagine being in some office building that has no natural light. And it's like, you can just tell what's going to happen yep. from an intuitive human sense. What's going to happen to my body? Like, you know, nope. you can it almost feel it. It's almost like that side feels like death. Yeah. No, like I think about many people getting up, you know, in the dark, getting in their car, getting on a train, getting on whatever, going to an office with no windows in, you know, fluorescent lights and artificial lights, then getting back in their car to go to work to on a treadmill inside another building. Like, it's I like, you're, this is not, that's not how that's not health. That's not, we've got to find time to be in nature. And yeah. if you, if you don't have that space now, you've got to find a way to create it. I really yes. believe that. Like I don't, and even I'll tell you what, even if I did live in Minnesota and I, and I'm not going to, but if I did, I would be bundled up and getting outside somehow. Like I just know I yeah. need to be in nature. I have right. to be outside every day. I've got a friend who lives in Minnesota. She do, they do dig holes in the ice and do cold plunging and all sorts of wow. stuff out there. Well, my sister lives in Minnesota. <laughs> she hikes. My sister hikes in Minnesota all the time, even when it's cold. Like she she makes little efforts like that. And I totally agree with you. And I think I love what you're sharing because it's like it's like basic common sense that we really need to be reminded mm -hmm. of hard. Yeah, this we're day skipping, and, age. and I watch all this <laughs> biohacking stuff of people buying all these things, and I'm like just get outside. <laughs> like, I love that stuff too. Like I love red light. Yes. And, but just can just get outside. It's You're going to get so much yeah. more um, benefit from that. Just little thing. And I don't want to get too deep into this, but even like, I'm very aware of not wearing sunglasses before noon. Like I want to actually right. get in sunlight, like things. So your body's, you know, regulating its, its own cortisol hormone, right. its own hormones, right. its own melatonin at night, like all of that. So that's right. all really works with nature. Um, but yep. the thing that we didn't talk about yet that I want to share, cause this is actually more important than what we're eating, how we're moving and being out in nature is our belief set. <laughs> and this is so important because I attract women and men, mostly women uh, that come to me in midlife and they say, I'm 40, I'm 50, I'm 60. And they give me all their diagnoses, all the things that your doctor said, all the reasons. Wow. And they say, but I'm this, but, and then they'll say things like, is it, am I just different? Is it too, is it too late for me? Is it wow. not possible for me? And what I want to share is wow. that all those hurdles that people share, there's people that also have those hurdles that do look different and are having different results. And that's a result of mindset. If you believe something is possible, you can create it. If you believe it's not possible, you will never create it. It's just, mm -hmm. it won't happen. If you believe you're doomed, your genetics, your um, family history, your diagnosis, what your doctor said, all that, if you believe that to a core, nothing is going to change for you. So true, girl. I can, I can vouch for this literally because I read the biology of belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton and I started using it with clients. I started guinea pig. I'm like, we're going to change. You're not ever going to say that you have that ever again. We're not. And so we're yep. going to get into the belief system of my body is healing. My body's fine. It's just struggling in this. I, I'm, I'm just hearing it struggling with that. It, we're like, instead of being like, yeah. oh, it's because I have hypothyroidism and chronic Lyme and, but nope. 
we're just, we're going to just not ever entertain that thought again. No. And when your body just says, oh, I need some rest. You're just going to go with that in that moment. And when your body says, I don't like that food. Okay, cool. I'm just going to go with, but I'm not also going to be like, I can't ever eat these things. No. Like I have worked with belief systems so much and it works. Yes, it works. It works like, like magic miracle level. I'm yeah. so serious. So if you don't believe totally something agree. possible, you'll never, ever, ever create it. You just won't. So, so right. you have to fake it till you make it. If you don't, if you're like, I really yep. don't see how this is possible. And one thing that yep. really drives me bonkers with doctors, like I, obviously we need doctors. I love doctors, but so many times they're just, they're repeating their training and they're, they stop looking at people as a human and they're just looking at it as a diagnosis. And this is the drug for it. And mm -hmm. what they say, they don't realize how much power it has when a doctor it drives me nuts. When a doctor tells a midlife woman, um, it's your age. You have to accept it. It's your whole age. You have to accept it. Like <gasps> what? Cause then that's right. what they believe. Right. Right. And, 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 you know, I mean, I'm not trying to be just, I know there are a lot of wonderful doctors and they're doing their best and they mean well, but like when I see, I, I try to imagine that there's like 30 women a week coming in and I'm diagnosing them with hypothyroidism and I'm not ever like that's it. I'm not ever asking why I'm not ever yep. like probing deeper. And I understand they have time restraints with all that, you know, with insurance and it's like, it's a mess, you know, but it's like, we're not, when we get a label and diagnosis like that, we stop being curious. We stop mm -hmm. looking at like what's actually going on. So I, I, you know, it's like, okay, instead of I have hypothyroidism, it's like, oh, Hey, my thyroid sound, seems like it's struggling a little bit. What do you need thyroid? And like, just looking at it that way, instead of this, like, I have this chronic disease, yeah. you know? <laughs> so I, I, I think it's amusing about this whole, the chronic, let me just, I'm giving you a couple examples here. So I'm, I have an autoimmune. I've had it for you, okay, 20 perfect. years. Yeah, let's go um, into that. Um, my autoimmune is a mild one. It's it's celiac. So it can be mild or it doesn't have to be mild depending on how you okay. take care of it. So, but all autoimmunes are connected. So if you don't yes. take care of one autoimmune, you can likely get another one. So autoimmune runs in my family. My sister's type one diabetic. My aunt mm. had rheumatoid arthritis. I have, mm. I have celiac. They're all okay. connected. So if you basically have an autoimmune and you don't take care of one, you can easily get another. But I'm bringing this up for a reason. I get a message at least once a week uh, through our website mm -hmm. of somebody like acting like they're going to die. I can't believe I have celiac. <laughs> like my life is over. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do? And I'm, I look at it like what an interesting lens that oh, they're looking wow. at that through. Like that never occurred to me when I got diagnosed with celiac, that my mm -hmm. life was over or that I wouldn't be able to have a normal life. Like what occurred to me when I found out I had celiac was, Oh, now I understand what's happening to my body and why I feel this way. Great. I just need to be more committed to unprocessed food. I'm not going to have gluten. Wow. Obviously I'm not going to yeah. have processed food. All my symptoms are gone. I feel amazing. Like it was wow. such a different lens, right? And, you look and, and you're like solution. Yay, yeah. Now solution. I know. <laughs> One example. I, and I got like, so it's just to me, I'm, I'm always thinking like, why do people go to doomsday? Same thing. Um, it happens a lot. I mean, and I cannot speak for this because I don't, I, this has not been my world, but I will, ha I do have a lot of friends that have navigated breast cancer. Mm -hmm. for cancer. And I just watched the difference on how people navigate things, mm -hmm. like how one person will say their life is over where the other is like diving full in, changing their lifestyle, changing their habits, yeah. teaching on it now, like jumping in, like it's just, right. and granted, like there's some things we cannot control there. I understand that, but like, right. look at the quality of life when they're embracing the possibility versus the doomsday. Yeah. Yeah. And that goes with all health habits too. Right. And it's just, just in general. And I kind of going back to what you were saying about, like, I like when you had your little moment where you're like, I also chose to live in San Diego. So I mm -hmm. could be like, I made that happen for myself, yes. you know, and I'm more familiar with like your story. And it's like, no, you just made that happen. It wasn't like, it no, just it wasn't handed an easy to one. You. No, I didn't know anybody <laughs> yeah. out here when I moved here. So I, I'm a, I'm, I mean, I'm definitely a tough love coach. I can't say everyone loves me. <laughs> I, I broke the people pleasing habit a long time ago, but that's what I, I love about you. It's I, real. I really, so you're like straight talker. <laughs> I really, I really work with people on what do you believe and what do you want? Because if you're committed to living in circumstance and committed to being right about that, there's no coach that can help you. There, yep. there just isn't because yeah. if you, like, if you, they go to you, Tara, and they say, I want to like, I want to have arms like you, or I want to do this, but they're committed to the reason they can't. And they're yep. going to try to enroll you in that and tell you all the reasons why, like, they're never going to change if they're, yep. are they more committed to being comfortable and being right or more committed to the possibility? 100%. So to me with everything, with anything, we have nothing to lose by looking at the possibility. 
If yeah. we get stuck on the circumstance and the problem, then our life, what's going to change? Yeah, exactly. And yeah, I've, I have had clients like that. I'll be real. And it's, um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot yeah. of work. Cause I got to meet them where they're at and, and, and do my best to ask them excellent questions to get them to shift, but like, it's not guaranteed. And I'm, you know, it's, I'm also not, it, it gets to a certain point where I'm like, okay, if you don't, if you don't mm -hmm. want to do it, you can, you know, and so it is, it's a personal choice and belief. And that's where I kind of wanted to get in with you next is like, in terms of helping people shift in their mindsets, cause you do all of these like programs, all these code, all this coaching stuff. Like what have you found to be like the belief system barriers that block people the most? Yeah. Um, and they're very legit. Um, usually it's it, honestly, it starts in childhood, um, with mm -hmm. what your parents said, what you watch, what you modeled. Those right. become ingrained beliefs. So we have to first recognize that that's, that's going on. And, and that, that's, that applies with not just our bodies. It applies with money mindset. It applies yeah. with taking risk. It applies with everything. Um, so you have to, number one, know where it comes from and be kinder to yourself and realize, okay, this is, this is something that's deep rooted. This came from here, but then yeah. it's honestly, it's just the next level is a decision. It's just making a decision. Do you want something different? Mm, Do you want yep. something different? I know yeah. with your background, like you come from, for example, a very strong religious background, a very right. strong one. Like you had a strong mindset around that. You had to right. make a decision that you wanted something else. Like that's, yep. that's like a whole, yeah. um, I came from my own set of things. I had to make a decision. Um, right. I'll tell you money was a heavy one in my, in my family mm. and what I was told and what I believed. Um, mm. I had to really work on that. Uh, and, uh, body health. Uh, yeah. I really had to navigate that. So it's being aware, number one, and then ultimately making a new decision. Like, what is it you actually want to create? And then I, I have a method that I say is decide vision action. It's three steps. So make nice. a decision. Vision is then getting really clear on what do you want and why, not the how, but yeah. what do you want and why? Like, why do you yeah. want to be healthy? Why do it. you want to? Yeah. What is that? Mm -hmm. Going really deep on that, getting really clear. I spent a lot of time with clients on that, on that aspect. And even in my business coaching clients, mm -hmm. and then only after you're fully in decision and in your vision, can we work on actions? Like, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Like, and you know, this from weight loss and training, yeah. and you can, you can give somebody the best workout and nutrition plan in the world. If they haven't decided and they're not clear on their vision, it's not going to happen. We'll never I, take the actions. Yep. I, uh, I won't give those clients their training program until I feel like they're ready. I'm like, it's doesn't matter. I could, yeah, dude, I could have given that to you like three weeks ago. They won't follow it, it. It's all it's going to do is make you feel more like a loser. I know you're not going to do it. We got to get mm. to some way deeper stuff first, you know? Nope. So I totally feel you. And I love what you said about awareness. Cause I'm like, I'm at, you know, I grew up poor. <laughs> I'll just be mm -hmm. real single mom, five kids, you know? Um, and I love what you're talking about, but the awareness that kind of has to come before this decision, right? Cause you got to become aware that yes. how you actually are looking at stuff. And a lot of people don't want to do that. It's, true. it's it's hard to accept. It's like, actually, yeah, I do have a belief system that I'm like always going to be fat or that I'm always, I'm never going to make money. Like, ah, you know, that awareness piece is so big. True. Do you, what I bet a lot of yours comes through in nature walking time. Yeah, Wait, so how do you do I this? get my, it's actually funny. That's when I get my biggest awareness is, is when I'm moving yeah. outside. That's why I never understand when people don't want to be outside. I'm like, I, know. I get everything from being outside. Yep. Like I, I have to like, it's, it's funny. I torm I torture myself with, do I bring my phone or not bring my phone when I'm walking? Because if I, right. if I, don't bring it. I get all these ideas and I have no place to put them, you know, right. and I'm like worried I'm going right. to distracts my, right. But if I bring my phone and then I could get distracted putting the ideas down. <laughs> totally. So I have this like battle with myself. I'm like, what do I totally. do? <laughs> what do I do? I feel that. Um, but it's, yeah, I get most of my ideas when I'm in, when my body's in motion, when I'm outside and that's when I get my most mm -hmm. clarity and my make the most connections to mm -hmm. the past. Also from listening, I'm a huge student. I, I probably, I read three books a week. Um, yeah. I, wow. or I say, listen to on audible. Wow. Three a week, at least three a week. I'm, wow. I, I mean, I, it's, I, as soon as I wake up in the morning, if that's what I'm listening to, I'm wow. getting ready. I'm listening to it when I'm driving, I'm listening to it when I'm walking. I'm, I'm like, that's amazing. I'm constant before I go to bed. I'm, that is my, um, I'm a huge student. So I'm mm -hmm. always listening. So as I'm listening and learning, I'll have little breakthroughs or connections and I'll make sure to write them down and explore them. You know, what's interesting is I'm in a mastermind um, with a put on by a guy named Scott Duffy and Scott, it was the interviewer for entrepreneur magazine. So he's interviewed everybody, like all the huge, huge names, you know, mm -hmm. all the big guys. And he's like, you know, he's like, I started, he, he's a very curious mind. He started asking, he asking like, what do you contribute your success to? And he's like the most common answer that he got was I'm an eternal student. 
student, I'm always oh, learning. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. That's great. And so no surprise, you know, like you've been able to build something really significant out of nothing. You've been able to reach a lot of people and it makes sense because you're doing your awareness practice. You're tapping in, you're staying healthy, you're taking care of yourself, you're learning. And then actually let's get into, you're applying and cause let's talk about mm-hmm, this for mm-hmm, a second. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, cause it's like, okay, I decided I want to get healthier. Or yep. I decided I want to get up early or I just, you know, yeah. And, and it's like, okay, I know why I'm doing this. It's like, so I can feel more energy and blah, 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 and all these things. And then the action part. Okay. So what do you think it, what do you think is the difference? Cause you're definitely an action taker. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think we I were am, at course, dinner so. and you were yeah. just like, Oh really? That's a good idea. Let's do that right now. Uh-huh. Like <laughs> yeah, you're I'm definitely good at the applying thing. Yes. And then sometimes it's hard to identify why we're good at the things yeah. we're good at. But what have you noticed? If you could share some insights on like the people yeah. who don't take op- a- action, the oh, difference between you question. and them. Yeah. Such a good, so I actually, one of my programs that I have is, is a goal achievement program, like how to achieve any goal in 12 weeks. And it's yeah. so wild to me watching people come through that program because, uh, so there's a method to achieving any goal and to taking action. Like there's a, there's literally a method. Like if you, you can just follow a checklist and make things happen. So it's not the how that stops people. They think it's the how people mm-hmm. say, I don't know how, or yeah. I don't have time for the how, like, yeah. but that's not what's stopping them. What always stops people from action is they're living in circumstance, not possibility always, because when you get laser clear, like so passionately clear on what you want mm-hmm. and you connect the why to it, like you're laser clear on that vision, it will speed you into action like nothing else. And if you don't believe me, um, just do this little exercise right now. If you're, if you're not an action taker, I want you to think of like a celebrity or somebody that you like really admire or look up to, like whoever that is, like to me, it'd be like Oprah. Like I'd be like, yeah, Oprah, I love her. Yeah. If they were to call you and say, listen, I've cleared my schedule tomorrow. I'm going to be near you. And I want to spend the day with you. Like just you and me, <laughs> how fast would you clear your schedule for tomorrow? Right. Like every single one of you would say you would do it. And if you, right. if you say you didn't, then you're not thinking of the, a big enough person that you would be excited. Yeah. About. Right. Same thing with like, take it the opposite way. If something happened to one of your children or your spouse and it was urgent and you had to get over to the hospital or whatever, how fast would you make that happen? Would it be a priority in the, it, it would be instant. Yeah. And so, so taking action is actually not the problem. The how is not the problem. The problem is you are not clear on why you want what you think you want to go for. Right. Because once you get super clear on that, nothing will stop you in your action steps, nothing. Mm. And stop to add to that, stop running your vision and your goal by people Mm. that haven't done it. (laughs) Like why they just going to talk you right out of it. Exactly. And when you talk to people who have done it, because I've been in both worlds and I'm sure you have too. It's crazy. It's like all action. So if you're talking to somebody, you have a big goal and they haven't ever done anything like that. They're going to just entertain all these yeah. like doubtful things. And then when you talk to somebody who's done stuff like that, you sound like them now yeah. you sound like the, it's like, they're like, Oh yeah. Like why wouldn't it? Right. <laughs> it's like, right. this, like why? Yeah. You just blah, blah, blah. like, you know, it's the energy true. is like, it's so easy. Like, why are you even making this a thing? You know? So totally agree. So, okay. So the the, the environment of who you're entertaining and then getting very, very clear. So let's say, okay, let's say this, let's say somebody wants to um, build a business like yours. Okay. And their why is like, they just feel this soul calling from like the divine and like, they have to share this message and they're really passionate about it. And they have that. And then they still feel that like paralysis moment of like, mm-hmm. and what do I actually do? What, do, how do you so, help people with yeah, that? Yeah, Well, then there's, there's obviously there's steps. I could walk people through a step on how to do something. However, the clarity <laughs> comes with the vision. That's, I can't yeah. say it enough because yeah. first of all, just, let me just show you, like to make this so crazy simple. Do you think that people can find answers to anything? in this world of information overload, hundred million percent. Yeah. Like you could go to Google for pretty right. much anything and everything, right. honestly, right. like anything and everything you could go to Google for. So yeah. information is not the problem. Yeah. The problem yeah. is you think the problem is time or information. That's not right. the problem. The problem is your clarity of what you want. Yeah. I can't I, say it enough. Like, yeah, I get, agree. It, even, okay. Well, take your workout. People. You're somebody that really wants to get fit and they're just not taking action all of a sudden they're going to be on the cover of a magazine in 
12 weeks and they're getting paid a million dollars to do it. I'm just right. getting, making this up. Like that totally. would be a big enough clarity of vision. Yeah. You mean to tell me you wouldn't get it together for a million dollars to be on the cover? Like, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm not, and and yeah. if there's resistance there, I found that there is some sort of um, lack of clarity on what they actually want. That's right. What I mean. or, yeah. yeah. There's confusion. There's confusion on that. Like for me, I always say people are like, how are you so disciplined with the gym? And I'm like, I'm not disciplined. I like want to, yeah. because I get so much out of it. Like, you no, know, and, I, and I, I'll say like, I love working out and going to the gym and moving my body and challenging, but am I always like rip 24 seven? No, but I'll tell you what, like, if I have a project coming up where I know, like I'm, I'm, because I'm leading a lot of my live fat loss programs, they're all yeah. uh, evergreen and like meaning that people can do them at any time versus me yeah. teaching them. I'm not really creating new content there. Um, but I'm, I'm going to be filming like a final thing, a project that I'm doing in a few weeks. And I can tell you my workouts have gone up a whole notch knowing that that's coming because right. I'm clear on what that's for. Yeah, so exactly. that happens to everybody all the time, yeah. like depending on what's urgent. I had a, a, an interesting marker on my blood work that I didn't like. And my doctor's initial answer was a prescription. I didn't like it. So I got into action real quick on changing some things because I don't want to yeah. be on the prescription. So right. I'm saying when you're clear on your vision, you, it's easy so to true. take action. It's so true. It's so true. Also, what about, uh, you know, you talked about like your no nonsense kind of straight talking personality. One thing that I've noticed, like my ex-husband's grandma is mm -hmm. an super example to me. Like, I'm like, wow. Cause she's in her nineties, but she seems like she's like in her sixties. Like she's so with it. She is so young and youthful and like, it's so cool. And I, when I think of her, I'm like, you know what I notice is she just doesn't sweat stuff that doesn't matter. <laughs> like she doesn't take everything so seriously. And I, can you speak on that? Have you noticed that with you mm. and your friends that still like youth, youthful being able to like let go of things that don't matter and focus yeah. on the things that do have. So I've, that's been, I don't think I've mastered that yet uh, fully. To be <laughs> All honest. right. So that's not um, a true principle. But, <laughs> no, but I will say that I've, I've gotten a lot better at it. I've, yeah. I, in fact, I have a tattoo on my arm that says surrender because I realize that we can't control like yeah. just to remind me to surrender and not. So I would say if anything, I've just learned I've been, I'm very clear that we can't control anything. I can't I bet control anything. I bet you're better at it than you think you are. I, might because... be. I mean, I, I will say this. I will say this. I'm never too busy. I, I don't jam my schedule. Like I yeah. jam it enough for, but right. I, I've never, there's never, I'll, you'll never hear me say, I don't have time. Like it doesn't even, yeah. um, I, I create time for what I want. Yeah. I will say like, I, I was meeting with my um, COO recently and she said, you know, what, do you want different in your schedule? Like, are you happy with your schedule? And I'm like, you know what? I actually am. Like, I'm, I don't, I, I feel at peace that I could say yes to whatever I really want to. I yeah. feel at peace that I could travel if I wanted to. I feel at peace that I can go with the flow that nothing feels urgent anymore. So, yeah. so yeah. I guess in a way that I, I do have that. Well, you know, I kind of neurotyped you based off just hanging mm -hmm. out with you with my neurotyping yep. thing. And I really feel like you're a one B and like the, the word that one of the main words I think of them is they're really efficient. And that's why I'm like, you're probably oh, better at it than you think <laughs> you are because you're letting go of all this stuff that doesn't matter. So you can focus on the stuff that does. And I can totally see that. And you, well, you know, and, that's, like, and the, I will say just even when you said you read three books a week, like I don't, people are saying like, I don't have time. I'm thinking like, how do you not that time. Like I, every time I'm driving, I'm listening <laughs> right. to the book. Every time I'm walking, like I, I, like to me, it's like, how do you, what do you Welcome mean? Welcome to a dopamine to? dominant person. That, like yeah. it is true. You're it's fast. Like I have this like <laughs> joke with my assistant who's a one B two. I'm like, how are you so fast? Like I barely finished right. saying the words and you're like, I did it that's already. Funny. Like yeah, that's it's a gift. It's a gift to welcome to dopamine dominance, you know, and not everyone will understand that about you, you know, like, but you are kind of just moving at a faster speed than a yeah, lot of maybe people. That's, yeah. And that's not going to feel as stressful to you as somebody else who doesn't have that they're going to, that's going to look stressful to them yeah. because they don't have that dopamine that you do. But with sense. you having that, it's like, this isn't stressful at all. This is just normal speed for me. So it would feel stressful for me not to do it. <laughs> To say like, I'll do it next week would feel yep. stressful because then 100%. It's, on on, it's on my plate. I don't want it on there. You're I want such it done now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's one of the things I love about the neurotyping thing is like when you have that self-understanding and people are like, you should slow down, Natalie. It's like, no, actually I'm good, but I know you don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Okay. So in terms of what you have coming for people, by the way, if you guys don't follow Natalie Jill on 
on Instagram and TikTok and where else? Where's oh, thanks all the places everywhere. I'm, Nat- I'm Natalie Facebook. Jill Fit on all the yes. places on all the social media. Mm-hmm. Instagram and TikTok are probably my most uh, and Facebook are where I probably live the most. Um, and then, yeah, you can find me at nataliejill.com. I also have a podcast that Tara has been on, on it's called yeah. midlife conversations. Yes. And yeah. You can find me at all that. I know a lot of people will be excited. Check out her podcast. You're such a great interviewer. And I really appreciate what you're doing for women as they age. Cause it's so Thank needed. You. So, and your content is so funny too. I'm loving your daughter <laughs> is on there more now. And it's just been so fun to watch. So thank you so much. We will link that all up in the show notes and yeah, just appreciate you taking the time. Thanks Tara.